What's going on guys? Seth here from Team Union. Seth here for our week one battle uh, for the team builder for a week one battle in season two of the Little 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 League. Um, we are here with Rishu. Oh, hello. Uh, our partner in crime for this season. Uh, we are Team Tabasco. So this week we are going up against the Copperberg Diglets. Um, they have a team of, as you can see on screen, Gothitelle, Celestela, Mega Gyarados, Crocodile, Mega Sceptile, Conkelder, Vicavolt, Vivion, Lanoon, Magmortar, Slurpuff, and Empoleon. Um, if you have not checked out our draft analysis, go do that. It's already up on the channel. Um, it's not too long, so it's not too, uh, too time consuming, but take a look at that. Um, you'll know what our team is, our entire team, why we drafted what we drafted, um, and let us know your opinions of the team in general. Uh, but this is the team that we have for this week. So the way this is going to work, we're just going to go back and forth. Uh, my side is the four on the left. Rishu's side will be the four on the right. Um, and we're going to go back and forth um, talking about our side. So if you guys do not know uh, the way the format works, the multi-battle format, is you bring four mons each to the battle for a total of eight per team. But you can only actually bring three mons each into the actual game itself. So there's eight mons. Uh, or four per side at team preview and then six per team or three per player in the actual battle so one mon is there that you're going to leave behind um the way we usually team build is we'll build like a, an actual set that we could potentially use if we decide to change our minds for those last spawns but we typically don't really don't plan on bringing them um but we're gonna get right into the team here so we have uh we're just gonna call it dubon uh the way we name our team is they're all types of sauce because we are team tabasco bringing the heat and the sauce simultaneous simultaneously <laughs> uh so we have dubon the scrafty uh, with the aguave berry and intimidate with fake out drain punch knock off and torment uh, it's got 248 in hp 128 in attack 104 in special defense 28 in speed and an adamant nature uh, i'm just gonna look over my notes real quick so the we outspeed an uninvested Celesteela, so if they bring like a fully defensive Celesteela without any speed, we do outspeed that. Um, we're able to take two air slashes from the Celesteela um, and a and two leaf storms from the Mega Sceptile. So very bulky on the special side. Um, and then we also eat a lot of hits from the Magmortar. Uh, the Magmortar can potentially be a threat to our team. Um, and that's why Torment is there as well, so that it can't just consistently follow me over and over and over again. We Torment it so that it has to go back and forth between like Protect, Follow Me, Flamethrower, whatever it wants to run. Um, and that is our Scrafty set. Okay, so like, the play with Magmortar is we're just gonna like, as soon as it shows up on the field, assuming it's with paired with like a Lanoon or a Slurpuff, we're just gonna double team the Magmortar until it dies. We'll assume the Slurpuff or Lanoon gets the plus six and deal with that later, but... As for right now, just every mon on our team should be able to, when paired with another mon on our team, take down Magmortar in one turn. So that was the plan. Uh, first mon on my side is Soy, which is actually kind of our win con. Um, running the Fire MZ, Dragon Dance, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Dragon Claw, 108 uh, speed, which is enough to outspeed an Adamant Slurpuff. Their speed tiering is actually very weird. Um, so, like, there wasn't a lot we could do because uh, we are slower than base 81 Mega Gyarados. Um, as Slurpuff isn't really a threat to not be adamant, so we decided that route. We were able to put then the rest that wasn't in the max attack into bulk. Uh, max attack just hitting as hard as possible. Fire MZ, Fire Punch just for Celesteela. Uh, Ice Punch will hit Mega Sceptile, obviously. Dragon Claw is probably better. Ice Punch also a very good coverage move for their team. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to outspeed Mega Sceptile until we get to plus two. However, multi scale will help us get there. Um, as well as the threat of they need to kill the stuff on the other side of the field, um, which includes the next mod you're going to see, Mega Metagross. So, Soy, this kind of has the potential to backfire, but assuming we can get the situation right, and the situation is not that hard to set up, Soy can very easily clean this up late game um, for us. So, that's why it's here. Yeah, uh, the next mod on my side, we have our Mega Metagross. Um, obviously, with the Mega Metagross site and Clear Body before it Mega Evolves, we have Iron Head, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Protect. 128 in HP, 252 in Attack, 128 in Speed with the Adamant Nature. Uh, Rishu insisted I write Ooga Booga Iron Head for part of our notes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did. So, Iron Head just does a ton of damage to everything. 
Uh, Mega Metagross is so strong, so that's why we decided to go with Max Attack Adamant, just so we can hit things really hard. Um, the speed is there for the Mega Gyarados. We like their their team is pretty slow outside of the Mega Sceptile, so we really didn't need a whole lot of speed. Um, we could have EV to outspeed the 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 Vivian uh, or the Magmortar. We didn't really feel it was too necessary. I, as you can see, our coverage for the Magmortar is not really there, so there's no really there's no real point in out speeding it. Um, I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm thinking Gyarados. Well, no, Mega. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Uh, so Mega Gyarados hits base 81. Magmortar hits base 83, and then Vivian will be 89. So Vivian is not that big of a threat. I don't really think it's gonna come. Um, but even if it does, it's not doing a whole lot to us. Plus, we can Oko it back with really any of our moves. Um, and then Magmortar, we have other options for that. So that's pretty much our Mega Metagross set. Nothing too special. Um, like I said, speed for Mega Gyarados, and then Uga Booga Iron Head. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, Ugo Puga. Watch the draft analysis. Oh, his um, nickname is Great Poupon. Uh, just because that that pairs with the other Mega. It's it's a fancy type of. <laughs> um, anyway, our next Ugo Bugamon, All right, is Devil's Crotch. Great name. I'm so surprised they actually allow you to do that in game. Um, because that gen worked. But <laughs> Devil's Crotch, the shiny primate. Uh, with U-Turn, Close Combat, Ice Punch, Encore, holding the Choice Scarf. This is a likely lead for us, especially considering they do have two Intimidate users that we have a stat super effective move on and that U-Turn is also super effective on. Um, so the plan is kind of like lead with this U-Turn turn one and do a bunch of damage, help maybe kill something, and then come back late game and just start spamming Close Combat. Um, Ice Punch is for Sceptile. Encore is just kind of utility in case stuff starts setting up on us because their team is like really centered heavily around setup like they don't have a single fake out mon on their entire team their speed tearing is incredibly weird because they have base 135 and they drop to base 100 which is effectively infinite because it's the noon clicking e-speed uh and then they have 92 um which is where our speed comes in 232 uh jolly nature is enough to outspeed a crocodile um whether it's scarfed or not 252 max attack the rest is in hp kind of a simple spread but that's just taking advantage of what their team is giving to us um we considered Fire Punch for Celesteela, but Close Combat just does more. Close Combat just does more across the board. Essentially, Ice Punch is there for Sceptile and Vivalon. Um, but yeah, that's it. This thing hits very, does a lot of work against their team, especially if they do bring their Intimidators in on it, if they forget a Defiant, if they think we're Anger Point, um, then this can be very uh, advantageous to us. So there's just a lot of ad advantages to bringing Primeape in this matchup. Did you say what the speed was for? It was for the Scarf Crocodile. Yes. All right. Yeah, so uh, our next Mon, uh, on my side we have Marinera, the Amoongus, with the Aya Papa Berry and Regenerator, with Spore, Clear Smog, Giga Drain, and Sludge Bomb. Now we have 252 in HP, 252 in Defense, 4 in Special Attack, with the Bold Nature. So a very, very simple spread this week. We decided that Fully Defensive was just the best spread to go with. Um, sometimes 252, 252, 4 spreads are optimal, and that's just how it is nothing too crazy for this one um it so in the notes i wrote down it beats all physical threats and loses to all special threats so um it's not great for gothitel it's okay against celesteela but it's only because it can put it to sleep um it's really good against gyarados it's really good against crocodile it's decent but not great against septile um uh, good against Kinkelder, not great against vicavolt not great against Vivalon, uh, vivian Good against Lanoon, not good against, like, you get the point. It's really good against the physical threats, not very good against the special threats. So, putting something to sleep, staying in, being annoying, uh, clear smogging away boosts from the potential, like, Dragon Dance and Gyarados, something like that, and maybe catch the Sceptile with a Sludge Bomb at some point. But, that's what our, uh, that's what the Amoongus is here for. So, on to you. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, as the great MV said, we have a spread. Alright, on this Mega Manectric... As you're looking at your screen, you're like, what the heck is going on with these EVs? I'm going to start, obviously, Mega Manectric holding the Manic type with the Lightning Rod ability going to turn into Intimidate upon Mega Evolving. Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Snarl, HP Ice. Those moves aren't weird. The reason we brought all of them is kind of obvious. Uh, Thunderbolt for hard-hitting stab, Volt Switch for initiative, Snarl to like reduce special attacks if we needed, HP Ice for Sceptile. Um, now the spread. Okay, I'm, like I'm so I said, proud of this spread. <laughs> the... <laughs> Their speed tearing is, again, very weird. Mega Sceptile is faster than Mega Manectric, and they don't have another Mon 
that is anywhere even <laughs> remotely in the same speed and neighborhood as Manector. We can't outspeed Scarf Crocodile. So what we did is we outsped non-Scarf Crocodile. That's what the 24 speed EVs is for. Um, four special attack and modest nature enables us to guarantee to a KO Crocodile, or no-bulk Crocodile at least, um, with HP Ice. Uh, it also guarantees no-bulk um, Oko on Mega Sceptile. The max HP and the 192 defense with the Intimidate guarantees that at plus one from a Jolly Mega Gyarados, we can take two crunches. Um, Earthquake will still 2 KO us from there at plus one, but that means that they're hitting the ally or the ally is Celesteela. And I really don't think you want Gyarados Celesteela out against Mega Nectric unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Um, so just to, just to real quick interject that. So basically this is if, if the Gyarados gets to plus one, we intimidate it back to neutral and that's where we live the two crunches. Um, just to specify and just be clear. Exactly. So... The 36 in Spadef is just what was left over. I think it enables us to live at least one Leaf Storm. I'm pretty sure we could do that anyway. Um, but there really wasn't like another way to build the spread. Like we didn't get gain or gain or lose any Okos from Thunderbolt by doing this. Um, we didn't gain or lose any Tua KOs from Thunderbolt by doing this. So this this was the most optimal spread you're going to see in a Week One game. <laughs> I mean, we two a KO. Mega Manectric. Yeah, we two a KO just about everything on the team with this spread, so there was really no reason to run more special attack. Um, so on to the quote unquote bait mons, uh, the extra mons that we don't plan on bringing, but they're they're still there and they're still threatening. So we put uh, Frost Lass on my side, opposite of Primate, because if you guys have not watched the draft analysis, um, potential Frost Breath Anger Point shenanigans. Um, so that's just something that our that the opponent has to worry about. So we have our with Salsa, our Frost Last, because it's not hot. Uh, it's uh, pretty cool, actually, so mild, you might say. Uh, with the Focus Sash and Cursed Body, uh, Frost Breath, Ice Shard, Taunt, and Destiny Bond, 32 in HP, 252 in Special Attack, 224 in Speed, Modest Nature. No notes on these, because we're not bringing them. So. Okay, so, and then the, the best nickname that we have on this team. Mate, well, Grey Poupon is pretty good, and so is Devil's Crouch, but I, I syrup is a sauce, okay? Yeah. So Aunt Jemima is out here <laughs> drizzling the syrup all over the other teams. Um, we got oh, the Alba Berry, because there's... Uh, <laughs> don't think about it too hard. Uh, Quiver Dance, Bug Buzz, Sludge Bomb, HP Fire. This is, if we were actually bringing this mod, a pretty optimal set. Um, the thing I like, the thing I will point out about our bait mods, just because I don't want to get too involved in the EVs since it's probably not coming, um, is I really like how this team functions with these specific bait mods. Like, conceivably, we could have at least three different win cons, maybe four on team preview between Anger Point, Marinara redirecting from Dragonite, um, Dragonite just setting up Raw, which is what we're actually doing, and then uh, Marinara redirecting from Venomoth, Venomoth redirecting from Metagross. Like, there's a lot of different ways this team could be viewed on preview, and in the extremely likely event, that we catch them off guard by having not having one of these bait mods, then we are at an extreme advantage. Obviously, it's not great that the three of the mods on the left side are weak to Magmortar, um, but I think that's something we can live with because I think everything that we brought, like I said, again, can deal with it. We have ways to deal with setup. They don't have fake out pressure, so we don't have to worry about that. That's why most of our mods don't have protect. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just in general. A very, a very good team. Don't worry about that. So, excuse me. Excuse that interruption. But uh, so real yeah, quick, we didn't we're bring in the sauce. Yeah, we we didn't discuss a whole lot in terms of leads. Um, you had mentioned that Primeape would be a nice lead. I honestly kind of like Primeape Scrafty as a lead. How do you feel about that? I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I mean, we have fake out pressure. We have protect if we need it. Um, we can always U-turn. Uh, do we have U-turn on? We do, don't we? Yeah, we can always use turn if we need to. Uh, torment a potential Magmortar, so we'll see what happens. Um, be on the lookout for the game. I'm not exactly sure when this will be uploaded, but the game should be uploaded tomorrow uh, for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. Um, that's about it. Let us know what you guys think of the team down below. Uh, if you think we built pretty well for this format, if you know doubles a little bit better than us, if you think our build is complete trash, let us know. We're trying to learn here and document our experience. Um, if you think just me specifically as an individual is a bad player, leave that too. <laughs>
but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, comment down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the battle.